Well, this story is about when I was a young Christian, and it's about a ham sandwich. And um, I hadn't been a Christian long, so it was a long time ago. And I was keen to work for God, and um, there was a, a job in the church that needed doing it. was the beams in the church had these big oak beams at the top, and so we had to get scaffolding in, and I varnished all the beams and spent about a week doing it. And so I was there every day doing this job and then one day the uh, pastor came in, a very good pastor we had, it was the first church we went to and uh, he had this package in his hand and he brought my lunch and um, he opened it up and it was a ham sandwich and it was a, a really nicely made sandwich, you could see it had been made with care, made with care it had all salad in it and everything else. It looked very, I suppose, to people who ate meat, very appetising. But you see, the problem was, I hadn't been a Christian long and I was still a vegetarian. And um, now, this word is not against vegetarians who are Christians, because there are a lot of Christians who are vegetarians for various reasons, but there's no bad connections with them being a vegetarian. But with mine, it had a bad connection, and it had to be cut off. And God has ways of doing it. So that ham sandwich, as far as I'm concerned, God moved upon that pastor to make me that ham sandwich, to give me that ham sandwich for a reason. And when you listen to this, you'll understand why. Before I became a Christian, I was very much involved in... Um, it, well, it was I didn't realise at the time, but it was Eastern mysticism. And uh, all roads led to God somewhere or another. And um, but in because of my involvement in that, it put that influence of being a vegetarian and you know not wanting to have anything with any kind of animal rennet in the cheese or anything like that. I was completely against it, and it had become it had become a religion to me uh, because of all the philosophies and ideologies that I was involved in and Eastern religions and so on. Without me actually um, subscribing to any religion. It was what I'd been caught up in, and um, and so this was in the early 70s. And so he gave me this ham sandwich and I thought, I can't eat it. But the, at the moment I was about to say, um, I'm sorry but I can't eat that, I'm a vegetarian. God spoke to me very clearly and he gave me these scriptures. Now these scriptures he gave to... Um, Peter, when the Jews wouldn't mix with the Gentiles, it was just the Jews getting saved, and God was about to put the gospel out to all the Jews and Gentiles, and so he spoke to Peter through a vision. And at the same kind of vision, I got this picture, as well as God speaking to me through it, at the same time what he gave Peter. And so God gave Peter a vision of a sheep being let down with all kinds of unclean animals, and he said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter said, Not so, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. And the Lord said, whatever I've cleansed, don't call common. And God used that scripture to speak to me, telling me to eat the meat. And he also, at the same, on the same moment, revealed to me that what I, my vegetarianism had become a religion to me, and it was idolatry, and he had to cut it off. And he, he would do it by giving me a ham sandwich. And so, I'm reading from that scripture, Acts chapter 10, verse verses uh, 9 onwards and um, just before Peter went to Cornelius with the gospel because that was God speaking to Peter saying take the gospel um, to the Gentiles as well you'll have to read the story it's all in that chapter but Peter went up on the house stop to pray about the sixth hour then he became very hungry and wanted to eat but while they made ready he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners Descended into him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven. And that was God telling people, Peter, there's some men coming to see him, and they're from a, a, a centurion called Cornelius, who's a Gentile, 
and that Peter had to go back and, and take the gospel of the Gentiles. Before, if he, Peter hadn't got that vision and that word from God, he wouldn't have gone because Jews refused to mix with the Gentiles. But that was God saying, the gospel is for everybody. And so that's what he said to me. He said, don't call what God has cleansed common. And so I, I was a young Christian. I was full of this, but I was on fire for God. I wanted to do everything God wanted me to. I, he's told me to give up something. I give it up. I wanted to be all out for God because he'd done so much for me. I was so grateful for my salvation that I'd do anything for him. I was all out, laid all my life on the altar for him, whatever, Lord. And that was part of it. You see, even though we're saved, there's still things that might hang on to us from the past and they have to be cut off. And people need delivering from all kinds of things and healing and inner healing, lots of things. It doesn't mean to say we're not saved, it just means to say God's, uh, you know, begun a work that he's continuing to do, like he does with sanctification. It's an ongoing process until Jesus comes. Anyway, I, on the, it happened so quickly. And, the, you know, the pastor, he didn't even know. And he gave it me with a big smile because he knew he'd taken care and it was a lovely, it looked, you know, it, it, like I say to an unbeliever, it looked lovely. But I took it from him and in obedience to God, I ate this ham sandwich. And I want to tell you now, I've never eaten a ham sandwich so tasty in my life. It was sent from heaven, that ham sandwich, because I've never, I, I like ham and I get boiled breaded ham, all kinds of ham. Uh, smoked ham and everything. I make my own sandwiches and so on, buy them and everything. I have never eaten a ham sandwich so tasty in my life since then. Because you see, when you obey God, he blesses you and he makes things very tasty to you. And he makes things good. You see, there's blessings in obedience. Now, what does blessing mean in the Bible? It means happy, fortunate and to be envied. And I want to tell you, I felt very happy after doing that because I felt absolutely elated and God poured out his blessing on me at the same time and so that's my testimony there are other instances in my life where God had to cut off idols and he had ways and means of doing it one at one time I was abroad and it was uh, there was an idol there I'd been abroad before but uh, to this place before and that time somehow I'd got caught up in this idol and when I went back the second time as a Christian God led arranged all the circumstances so um, he would cut it off this idol and I put a video on that and so there might be an idol in your life that you need to cut off so you need to um, come alone with God and ask him if there's anything in your life that needs to be removed could be watching some foul program on telly that you're hooked on watching some dirty pornography um, being involved in drugs um, uh, or something that's corrupt in some way. If you're a Christian, you need to repent of it and ask God to cut it out and turn away from it and walk away and don't do it again. And I'll tell you, if you obey God, this is what discipleship's about. Uh, not every Christian is a disciple. Some operate in the permissive will of God. Those that are totally obedient in the perfect will of God are disciples. Only those who submit to the full Lordship of Jesus Christ and do what he says and even cut off things that you might be attached to called idolatry um, will you be blessed by and you'll go on and you'll grow in the Lord if we don't give up the things God is saying you know they're bad for you then we will not grow we'll stay where we are and at the end of the day I believe it will take us away from the Lord because the law of the temptation and the lust of the flesh and everything in this world can be very powerful so that's why we have to surrender all to God go his way uh, be obedient till he comes. Now, there's a scripture in the Bible, it's in the epistles of John, I won't turn to it now. It says, and it finishes with this, at the end of it, little children, keep yourself from idols. Now, he's addressing the Christian church here, and he's saying it's possible that you might, uh, even though you're a Christian, have an idol attached to you. So, pray about it, and you know, it's good after hearing a word like this to spend some time in prayer and be open with God. Remember, we are transparent. He knows us anyway, but he wants us to come to him and realise that he knows all about us. So you can't hide from him. And so we need to bow our knees, open our hearts up to him and say, Search me, Lord, and if there's any unclean, wicked way in me, remove it from my life. If there's any idolatry, cut it off. I'll obey you. I'll walk away from it. Jesus will bless you for doing that. 
Thank you for listening today.